Hey guys, this is one of the coolest designs that I've seen in a while and it's no photo reference necessary, nothing, you just, you just kind of do it. So we'll be making this and this and I'll show you guys how to make both of these guys super fast and yeah, let's get started. As you guys know, Photoshop is a great friend for InDesign and we do a lot of InDesign on this channel, but this time we're gonna start in Photoshop, but don't worry, it's gonna be super easy. I'll guide you guys through it step by step. So let's get right into it. So we're starting off with just the Photoshop file. So I just created a simple Photoshop file, nothing special. It's just a eight and a half by 11 white sheet. And we're gonna start off by going right here uh, to where it says rectangle tool. Now. I'm gonna right click on this because the first one I'm gonna make is a little bit easier and it's going to be the circle. And so I'm gonna use the ellipse tool. Now, I'm holding shift when I do this, but I'm dragging out a circle like that. Now the circle may need to be a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, great. Now, what I really wanna do here is just have it cover half the page. So you can see that it's still not quite there. I'm gonna bring up the free transform boxes by holding Control and T. So you can see that's gonna bring up this box and I'm just going to make this even bigger. Maybe something like that, maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah, something like that would be good. I'm gonna hit enter. And here is the, the best part, the most crazy part. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to listen to this part, okay? So I'm gonna click into the image itself and here I have the properties pulled up. So this is the tab that you wanna pull up. If you don't have this guy, go into a window, go down to properties and check it on. Then this will pop up. We're gonna go into the fill, go into the gradient. And here under where it says linear, we're gonna change that to angle. So boom, there it is. We have a really cool effect. Uh, I'm gonna change this to something like a 135 because I don't want it to be too dark and be directly pointed up at the page. So I'm giving it a 135 degree. Uh, now all you have to do is drag another one. So I'm holding Alt here and I'm dragging one directly down like that. Maybe it needs to be a little bit lower just to show a little bit of space on the sides there, like right here and right here. Okay, now I'm clicking on this guy again and I'm going to the fill and we're gonna make this into maybe something like a 90. Uh, I don't like where that's pointing. So we'll make that into something that points down, I would say is the best. So let's do negative 90. Yeah, there we go. Negative 90. Now I'm noticing that there is a little bit of an outline on, on the outside of these circles, which we don't really want. So selecting the top one, holding shift, selecting both of the both of them. You can see that both of these layers on the right are selected. Go into the strokes and just switch that off. It's super easy and it just gets rid of everything for us. Now I'm gonna move the properties tab back and just focus on this image here. Right click on both of these layers on the right and we're gonna convert this into a smart object. Once we've done that, we're gonna go up into the filter tab, scroll down to noise and then we're gonna add noise. So you can see that this, just by adding some noise, it's gonna give it a, a much more textured look and that's exactly what we want to create this visual interest and it's gonna act as a great background for whatever text we put in front of it. So feel free to adjust the, the grain of the actual noise. Um, and I really think that this is an important move where you click on monochromatic or else it'll start adding random colors, which is not quite what we want. Uh, so I'm gonna check on monochromatic and then just play around with this until I find some textures that I like. Now let's move on to the little bit harder base. So I'm gonna switch that layer off and just create a new layer here. So we're going back into the create a shape and we're just gonna do the rectangle tool this time. So right here. And I'm dragging out a bunch of squares. And I do that by holding shift. If you don't hold shift, it's gonna be rectangles. If you do hold shift, it's squares. So I'm going to do the same thing. Click one of these, go into my fill, gradient, and then change this into an angle. And we're also gonna be using 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135 degrees for this one as well. Just because it hits the square at certain angles so that it interacts with either the middle of the square or one of the corners of the square, which just makes it look more orderly. For this first one, let's do 45. And then I'm also going to check off the stroke. And then I'm going to make a copy of this by dragging it with Alt 
and then I'm clicking on the second one and I'm changing this to 90 degrees like that. Perfect. One more time and I'm changing this fill to a whole 135 degrees. Make sure you have all three of them selected and we're gonna make a bunch of copies of them together. So stuff like this and one more like that. Now, once we have all of them together, select everything, same drill, right click on the layers and then we're going to convert to smart object. So that makes it all into one group. And we're going to actually adjust the size so that we're not working with this. So again, pull up the free transform by holding control T and I'm going to hold alt when I drag these out. And what that'll do is it'll scale everything from the center instead of scaling from one of the sides. Instead of pulling like this, it's going to pull from the center like that. So it's uniform on all sides. So holding alt, I am going to drag it out like that. And I'm also going to give it an angle. So let's give it a little bit of an angle like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Uh, and then I'm just going to drag it out until this, this square in the middle fills the majority of the page. So let's try to get something like that going. Okay, once we have something we're happy about, we're going to do the exact same thing where we go to filter and you can honestly just click the add noise and it'll apply the exact same effect as you did for the other one. So here you can add the noise and this one maybe wants a little bit more noise. So this looks pretty good to me. It's it's it adds that texture and that's really good. Now all we're going to do is just export these. So we're going to file export. You can quick export as a PNG and then just export it wherever you need to export it. Do the same thing for the other one. So uncheck this layer, go into the other layer where we did the circle and same deal, export as PNG. After you've done that, we just head all the way back into InDesign. So I'll meet you guys there. Now you guys know that InDesign and Photoshop are super crucial for what we're doing here. Uh, so Adobe subscription is a super, super important. If you are still looking to get that, I have an affiliate link down in the description and it'll help support the channel. And for students, I think it's $19.99 a month, which is a crazy deal and you get every single program that is actually in there, which is great. Okay, so now that we are in InDesign, uh, I just have created a very, very simple document. Uh, check out the top left of the corner for the page and all the setup that you need to do in order to get what I have here, but just a standard eight and a half by 11 layout. So once we have everything in here, first thing we're going to do is actually go into the layer and we're going to create a new layer. The bottom one is going to be all of our images that we just created and the top is going to be the text. Okay. Now we can start implementing and importing all the images in. So while selecting the image layer, I'm going to go into the rectangular frame tool. And I'm just going to drag a image out. Now, what we're going to do is just find our image and put it in here. Just drag and drop the one we just made into this box. Now, while I do this, some of you guys might be asking, well, Sam, why not just do all of this in Photoshop? Well, the reason why we don't do a lot of this in Photoshop is just uh, first off, Photoshop will export you a raster file. So that means if you zoom in on the image, you'll start seeing the pixels, but InDesign will give you a vector file, which is good if we were doing printing or anything like that. Uh, and the second reason is we actually want these to have a lot more options. So InDesign will give you a lot more options in terms of the text as well as, uh, you know, things like the kerning, so like spacing between the actual text itself, uh, as well as other things that aren't super available on Photoshop. Um, so that's why we're doing all text as well as layouting in InDesign. And I think it is the right way to do these kind of things. Okay. So now that we have both of these in here, it's going to look a little bit weird, not very great to work with. So what I'm going to do is actually go into view and we're just going to turn on overprint preview. Now, It'll basically load what it'll look like, but it might lag your computer just a little bit. So if you want to switch that off, make sure you switch that off and just imagine the picture as you know, you think uh, should make sense on this page. So I'll leave that on just so you guys can see what I'm working with. And I'm actually going to lock this layer with the image and we're just going to work in this image with the text. So you can see that I can't actually select anything. Now to lay out something like this, it's actually fairly simple. We just need a title. Now, where do we usually put the title? Well, it's going to be where the darkest parts are. So you can either have it on the top right corner there you can have the bottom 
left over here or the middle. I like the middle, so I'm gonna drag a text box out like this and just put title. So um, let's do something like, are you ready? And I'm gonna change this so that it is a font that I like and it is a size that I think makes sense. So for this, we're just gonna use a nice Futura and let's use heavy and let's do 72. I'm not sure if I want that to go across the entire page. Uh, so maybe I'll make this into a little bit smaller, like a 60. Um, and then I'm gonna drag another box underneath it for a little bit of a subheading. So whatever you guys wanna write here, you can do. I'm gonna make this one case lower. I'm also gonna make sure that this is not in the heavy. Maybe we'll use like a medium or even, yeah, a medium sounds good. Both of these we actually want to test out how it looks as white. So it actually reads pretty good as, as white. And with the titles, you can actually make them into a highlight color. So for this, let's use something like a blue. And you'll see guys, let me do this thing and you'll see that this will actually turn out super well if you have other elements that are balancing this blue out. Pressing W to preview, it looks pretty good. Uh, and we're just gonna add some other things into it. So just drag and drop some text, do some text box, and uh, let's see if, so there you go. Um, I told you guys, this is gonna be really good with the blue, it's like an accent color, it looks really good. Uh, the trick guys to make any of these things look good is to place the elements that you wanna highlight or emphasize in the darker areas, right? So I have what I have here, and the main, the main body of the text is up here in the other darker area. So everything kind of balances each other out. And if you really wanna make things look professional, all you have to do is, you know, put these things on the top. They really help anchor the page and just makes things look more editorial and professional. And then on the second one, let's see. Again, we're gonna follow the same kind of design principles. So give me one second and let me, I do. Oof, well, <laughs> there we go. That's. That's, a, that's another just index color with the yellow, but man, these colors really make this thing pop. But yeah, that's basically it. Let me know if you have any questions on any of this, I'll be happy. The best way to reach me is by email and down in the comments. With that said, that's a lot of information that you guys covered today. Hope you guys have learned something new. If you did, please don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe and show your friends. And also on Instagram, tag me. If you guys make anything with this, tag me. I would love to see what your work looks like. With that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.